at KHTS Radio. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Good morning and welcome to the Senior Hour, which is sponsored by Comfort Keepers in Home Care, Santa Clarita Hearing Center, and Traditions Healthcare Hospice. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Doria. On your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220 KHTS. This is a show for, about, and by seniors, giving information to enhance one's quality of life. And our first guest this morning is calling in, and she is May Ronsi of our newest sponsor, Traditions Healthcare Hospice. Good morning, May. Good morning, Barbara. Good, good morning, Dr. Dorio. Good. How are you both? Good morning, May. Fine. I was we hoping were. you would be here in person so I could meet you this morning. I, I was hoping so, too. <laughs> I injured myself and wasn't able to, to get in the car and drive down. So I'm so sorry not to be there. I'm sure we'll be able to have an opportunity to do this again. Oh, yes. Now, where, now, May, where you would you be driving down from? From Lancaster. Oh, both of my... Uh, Kids and grandkids live up in Palmdale. Okay, great. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Oh, May, May, yeah. May you, you didn't injure yourself voting yesterday, did you? <laughs> no, I actually, no, I, I didn't. <laughs> I did run to the polls, though, two days ago. But, no, I, I did not do it yesterday. <laughs> uh, I agree. Know, we I seem think... to all be tripping over each other, but uh, it's an uh, exciting uh, election uh, for everybody it's like watching the dodgers uh win the world series so we're kind of reenacting a, a lot of that so yeah. uh, unfortunately we haven't crossed the finish line yet so uh, when we do we'll probably talk about it a little bit more that's true yeah so, well, well so may tell us a little bit about traditions health care so traditions health is a um, it's a large hospice agency our um our corporate office is actually stationed out of College Station, Texas. Um, we have three branches located in California. Uh, we have a Glendale office. We have a our, my office here is the Lancaster office, and we have a Bakersfield office as well. Um, we service um, my my particular branch services the Antelope Valley, um, all the way down to Santa Clarita and up to Mojave. And of course, I, and I love, Barbara, your opening statement, our focus is also on quality of life, and, and not so much of what we do with hospice care. Right, right, Good. yes. So it's important that um, our listeners know um, about hospice care, though, uh, because they, they hear, you know, we're, we're in a pandemic, and the important part, May, of understanding where you want your quality of life to be and where you want your life to go is knowing um, when it's time to make decisions and have a discussion uh, about end of life care. How do we do that with our our uh, our patients? I thought it, you know that's such a great point to make, especially now with COVID. I, I think the most important thing is to encourage your listeners um, in our communities to have that conversation before they need to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. I think a lot mm -hmm. of times um, we see, especially in, in the hospital setting, the conversation hasn't been had, decisions haven't been made, and now we're in that final hour and having to have a family have to make those difficult decisions um, without having a knowledge of what the patient's wishes were. So I think it's really important to start that conversation ahead of time with your families. Um, we do have, um, Traditions Health has a radio show as well. We air on uh, Tuesdays at 12, and one of our topics was about advanced health care planning, and, um, and that'll, that'll be our, that show is going to be airing t um, today, actually. Um, and th the important thing is to have that conversation. I was mentioning on, on the radio show that I um, gave to my parents a couple years ago advanced directives for Christmas as gifts. Um, 
just because I wanted them to realize it was not just a gift for them, but it was a gift for me mm -hmm. to be able to know what their wishes were. Because I think, and I think you both probably agree with this, autonomy is so important for all of us. None of us want to ever give up that independence, the independent uh, thought process, or the ability to make those decisions for ourselves. So I think if we can encourage your listeners to think about what, the, what their wishes are for their future. I know a lot of us don't like to think about those what ifs, but unfortunately, like taxes, we all have to come across that bridge one day, um, and you know, death and dying is you know is one of those inevitable things that's going to happen to all of us. And if we're prepared before that time comes, it makes it so much easier and, and kinder for our families. Did you read the other? Absolutely, and you know, with so many individuals uh, and healthcare being the way it is, may we 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 can um, uh, individuals, our patients survive longer and sometimes uh, we can keep at certain points we can keep them going uh, artificially um, uh, to and um, sometimes we can get them back to normal and sometimes we cannot but once we get to that point may it's really difficult for us to uh, then uh, say uh, ask the question what do you want us to do next? And that's why it's so important for what you said, that that discussion comes early, right now, before you're in that situation. That's very true, Absolutely. because that's, that's what happened with my husband and I. Um, he was um, incapacitated, and I knew that I couldn't physically take care of him because he was, he was in his chair in the living room he couldn't get to the bed to go to sleep because he couldn't get up and down so we had to keep him in the the uh, easy chair that you know the feet come up and you can semi lie in it and um, I realized that I couldn't do it myself and fortunately many years ago I got long-term care insurance much against Russ's wishes but I'm so glad I did because I was able to have someone come in first overnight so that I could sleep and then 24-7. And it was one of the best things I ever did. And um, he was able to stay at home where he wanted to be because he did not want to go into any kind of board and care, nursing home, anything like that. And we were able to keep him at home until, uh, as Dr. Dorio knows, he got pneumonia and had to go into the hospital. And we were finally able to uh, have palliative care come in there. And um, he passed away in the hospital. But um, I, was, I was so thankful that I was able to make sure that he was well taken care of and that his wishes were adhered to. It makes a big difference. It really does. It it really does, and I and I think Dr. Dorio made a good point too. We, we there's so much you know medicine has made so many amazing advances. There's so many things we can do to help patients live a meaningful life, to give them, um, you know, to to extend their life. And I think the decision needs to come um, ahead of time where. Is quantity more important than quality? And for some patients that we do keep on life support, you know, it, it's are we, are we taking some of that away from them? And I think it's a very personal decision. We all have a different definition of what quality of life means to us. And I think that's why I really like to, um, you know, whether I'm doing palliative care at the hospital or doing hospice here at Traditions Health, I think it's really important to allow patients to maintain their autonomy and ask those questions. What does quality of life mean to you? Because it means something different to all of us. I lost my first husband when he was 43 years old to a motorcycle accident. Mm. But unfortunately, prior to his, to his death, he was in the hospital for eight days. And my son and I, and my son was 17 at the time, we had to make a very difficult decision about what does quality of life mean to dad. Um, and it, it, for him at that point would have meant being having a tracheostomy tube, probably not having very much brain function and living mm -hmm. his life out in a facility. And that we agreed upon was not a decision that he would have ever made for himself, right. and that wasn't mm -hmm. the quality that he was willing to live with. So we chose quality over quantity. Um, and so I think that's a really important discussion to have with uh, 
with our with our families, with our especially with our physicians, because they know what our disease process is and what what that outcome might look like for us. So I always encourage my my patients, my family, even our listeners on our radio show, please always consult your doctor and make sure that you're that you have a good idea of what your disease process looks like and what the expectancy of that disease process is. So it's important that our listeners know that uh, they, they are the final say in uh, what can happen toward end of life. But it's so important, like you said, May, it's so important that uh, we give the benefit to the caregivers, the people around you, to uh, open up decisions that are made prior to uh, when those decisions have to be made. So what you did, giving um, power of attorney and you know end of life directions to your to your parents, was so important because that means that you you care about them, but they're caring about you as well. Absolutely, and like I told them, it wasn't just a gift for them. It was really, it was more of a selfish gift for myself. But you know, shortly thereafter, my dad had a uh, his abdominal aortic uh, dissected. Um, he had a, an a aneurysm that dissected and was not doing very well in the hospital. And we thought we were going to lose him, but it was so so relieving for my sisters and I to know exactly what dad wanted, so we could honor his wishes. Um, and and I, I yeah I think it, for us it was more of a gift for us than it was for them and um, I think that the important thing too with advanced directives and if any of our listeners have advanced directives to not just do them and file them away in a safe place it's really important and that's something I told my parents you don't get to just t- take this and fill it out and put it away somewhere you have to share it with us because I think that's a big piece of advanced healthcare planning and um, advanced care planning that doesn't get shared. Um, I, and I think that's part of what we see in the hospitals. Well, nobody knows. Well, we know mom filled that form up, but we have no idea where it is. So it's really important to have that conversation with your family as well. It so is. Let's, and let's that, that kind real. of thing needs to be included in, in a trust or a will of some kind also. Yeah, well, sometimes the wills don't always have a medical component to them so it's I always encourage people if you're going to do a will to make sure it has a medical piece to it because not all of them do some of them just address estates and financial planning so if it's not going to an advanced health care directive can once it's notarized or witnessed can be just as you know it's just as important and it is a legal document once it's notarized or witnessed so I, I agree with you if you're going to do a will make sure that it's got all the components of it including your health care directive in it um, if not you can always supplement it with an advanced health care directive or doing a pulse a physician's order for life sustaining treatment with your with your physician mm-hmm. or nurse practitioner yeah we had ours done along when we had our trust made out we had the advanced care directive in included in that it was a separate piece of paper or form but it was still included in all of those papers and mine is included in the the trust that I have now so and that is very 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 important to have it really is so May there are there are some of our listeners who are are listening to uh, us talk about advanced directive, uh, power of attorney, uh, but they're saying, hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm 40, I'm 50 years old. Uh, I don't need to talk about this now. Uh, some people <laughs> even say I'm 70 or 80 and say, I, I don't need to talk about this now. But you, you never know uh, when these decisions are going to have to be made. And it's important you keep in mind uh, that uh the law is the law sometimes, and sometimes, uh, dependent on the situation, uh, decisions can be taken out of the hands of even the family. Right. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. why we have to be fully prepared with the legal paperwork beforehand and discuss specific issues. So I usually, with my patients, I will tell them, you know, if, they're, if I think they're having some heart problems or possible strokes or uh, even might be going on dialysis. I mean, these are situations where they can escalate and become uh, worse. And of course, I want my, I want to, for them to tell me that 
they want they want certain things done and they want certain things done by the family. So going back to having this discussion, uh, I think it's really important at any age uh, to talk about it. I, I agree, and I, and I always say if you're over 18, you should have an advanced directive um, for, for so many different reasons. Not only does it put your wishes in writing, but it also names people that you trust to carry out those wishes for you. So it, I, I think I mentioned in um, one of my earlier broadcasts on, on our show that my husband for the longest time was not my decision maker, um, and I took that power away from him intentionally because I knew that he wouldn't be able to carry out the wishes that I had requested of him. Uh, I'm 50 years old. I've chosen for myself to be a, a D DNR, which is a do not resuscitate. I have MS, and I have certain, you know, cer that's just kind of, that's my, those are my wishes. That that's what I've determined for myself. But I didn't trust that he'd be able to do that for me because he's too emotionally charged and, you know, he doesn't want to let go. Um, only recently we've been having a more detailed discussion. I think he's starting to understand why I've chosen that. Um, and I've just redone my advanced directive to reflect him as my decision maker. I had originally chosen my sister. So I think it's important at any age to have it, not just for your wishes, even if you're full code and you want everything done for yourself. It's important to name people that you trust for yourself. Unfortunately, death doesn't discriminate. Um, and, I, and I saw that with losing my first husband. He was 43 years old. And all the time I see young patients die. Here on hospice, we recently had a couple of very young people die, leaving very small children behind. So unfortunately, you know, things have changed for us. We're seeing a lot more cancer now. And with COVID, we've seen a lot more liver cirrhosis. So I think it's yeah. really important for people to be prepared. And again, at any age, if you, if you have a family, if you have anything that you feel precious to you that you are leaving behind, you should have an advanced directive. I think absolutely, and be, being prepared is so important. Uh, practicing preventive medicine is so important for me, but uh, for my patients, I want them to be prepared. How do we? How do our listeners get a hold of you and traditions? To um, get a hold of me, um, my name is May Ronsi. I'm the nurse practitioner and the executive director of the Lancaster branch. My phone number here is 661-951-1146. Uh, and if you want to look us up on the web, it is traditionshealth.com. And we are, um, again, a hospice agency here in California, but do home health in um, 12 other states. We have home health and hospice um, pretty spread out over the United States. So it, it's a really great organization. If any of your listeners ever have any questions or need guidance or, you know, just, ha just have concerns or um, comments, they, I'm always open to taking anybody's calls if they want to give us a call. Again, it's 661-951-1146. Thank you so much, May, for joining us today. And Thank hopefully uh, sometime in the future I'll get to meet you and you'll be able to come into the... I hope uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I would love to um, be on your show again and maybe we could have a, you know, talk about advanced care planning or Pulse next time. Anything you yes. guys want to talk about, I'm more than willing and very excited to be a part of your show today. Wonderful. Great. Thank you so much, May. Thank you. We look forward to seeing Thank you, you soon. I'm Barbara Thank you Cochran. Both. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye bye. I'm Barbara bye -bye. Cochran with my co host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220 KHTS. Aloha, friends. Go check out Honu Coffee, home of the best cold brew coffee. What makes their coffee special is how their organic coffee beans are infused with nitrogen to create a smooth and delicious cup of coffee. You'll also find traditional bold coffees and island-inspired signature drinks. They're the perfect place to catch up with friends or just relax with your favorite cup of joe. Honu Coffee on Lions and Walnut in Newhall. Stop by and say aloha. And now for your convenience, a second Honu location at 23502 Lions Avenue between Peachland and Apple. Save water and save money. SCV Water wants to help you find your fit and take advantage of conservation rebate programs that will help you save. Water your landscape more efficiently. Replace your lawn with water-wise plants. Conduct free in-home water surveys. Cover your swimming pool and more. Find the programs that fit your needs and start saving today. Visit conserve.yourscvwater.com to learn more. That's conserve.yourscvwater.com. 
Experience luxury senior living at Oakmont of Valencia, Oakmont's brand new community in Santa Clarita. At Oakmont of Valencia, residents will enjoy five-star amenities, including state-of-the-art movie theaters, spacious custom-built apartment homes, and sweeping views of the valley, all close to shopping, restaurants, and medical centers. Enjoy resort-style living, professional concierge services, a luxurious salon and day spa, and world-class dining. At Oakmont of Valencia, you'll embrace retirement in style. For details, visit oakmontavalencia.com. Loss of hearing can affect the quality of life. Santa Clarita Hearing Center can help. They specialize in both preventative hearing loss and corrective measures, including diagnostic tests, new technology hearing aids, cochlear implants, hearing protection, and tinnitus treatment. They can adjust your current hearing aids or fit you for new ones. Santa Clarita Hearing Center also offers sleep molds, swim molds, and musician monitors. Book an appointment today. Log on to santaclaritahearingcenter.com. Located on McBean Parkway next to the hospital. That's SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Mission Valley Bank is a commercial bank in the Santa Clarita Valley that really puts the community into community banking. At Mission Valley Bank, we strive to be a trusted advisor to our clients, and that means being an integral part of the communities we serve. We started the Give Where You Live program to help bring awareness to our nonprofit partners. We're more than just a local business bank. In fact, we're a full-service, independent commercial bank that is locally owned, community-minded, and relationship-driven. I'm Tamara Gurney, President and CEO of Mission Valley Bank, and I invite you to experience the Mission Valley Bank difference, where your success is our mission. We want to be your most valued bank. Mission Valley Bank has been named Most Trusted Advisor Business Banker by the San Fernando Valley Business Journal five years in a row and received the Business Leadership Award by the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce, Valley Industry Association, and SCV Economic Development Corporation. Visit them at their Center Point branch location or at missionvalleybank.com. Member FDIC. Finding the right lawyer can be a challenge, but in Santa Clarita, there's no need to search when there's Hacker Law Group, Santa Clarita's premier litigation firm. Jeffrey Hacker has represented celebrities, financial institutions, accident victims, real estate developers, realtors, contractors, businesses, nonprofit organizations, and other individuals and companies with their legal challenges. Mr. Hacker is one of Santa Clarita's leaders, consistently listed as one of our most influential. When everything is on the line and you need legal counseling, visit HackerLawGroup.com. Your, your hometown station. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220 KHTS. And we're now speaking with Bradley Gross and, well, let's see, Santa Clarita Grocery, That's Bradley right. Gross, the head honcho over there, <laughs> <laughs> and his sidekick. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The yeah. other head honcho. <laughs> the other head we ha- honcho. We have twelve head honchos. <laughs> that makes the whole thing roll. <laughs> is Dan Ziegler, uh, who is the volunteer director of supply. Yes. And I have been up there, and that place is absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's a, it's a challenging operation we have to do a lot to get things going and um, keeping the food supply coming in is mm-hmm. a is a daunting task you know oh, and, yes. and so we're constantly looking for opportunities within the community looking for opportunities outside the community through other organizations to see how we can actually keep that supply chain coming in so you're the one who gets the stuff in yeah I go out and I look for it source out uh, organizations reach out to people within communities look for other organizations that help with food distribution as well and see how we might be able to benefit from that and then I bring that stuff into our our, our facility and then you have to do what Bradley says to do exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> and oftentimes I do what Dan uh, says to do so it's it's a good working relationship yeah it's definitely a team so, so so, Dan, um, let me ask you a question, though. I mean, um, revving up supply chains chains are not easy, uh, especially in this day and age. How do you how do you do that? How what experience or background uh, is it military or running a baseball team or what is it that you have done in life that has allowed you to organize so well of uh, what Bradley has done? You know, um, so I, I have been in the business field for over 20 years, and I've actually uh, ran a $40 million business with uh, an organization called Harris Corporation. And uh, part of that was the, the overall operations. I handled everything from 
financing to the sales team to the manufacturing floor to the warehouse and distribution making sure all that was over uh, the oversight of all of that and I've continued to do that throughout with through advisory roles and capacities as well for other organizations where I help them figure out those different things so that they can uh, actually build out a really a strong and resilient thing but I think overall to answer your question I'm the jack of all but master of none is uh, I guess <laughs> 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 well wait a minute now what what does Bradley do? Does well, he just tell you, go do this, go do that, go do the other? No, Is he the one waving the big stick? You, you know, honestly, I haven't been hit by it yet, but yes, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's just purely a height thing. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm still under his radar and reach. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, it's, it's definitely a collaboration. We have, you know, we have many wonderful volunteers at the organization, and there's many volunteers that have served in a, similar roles like ours, and so we, it's a collaborative effort. And I build off the collaboration and the team of everybody else and their input, and we and then we're able to go out and do those things. I see. So, Bradley, what is uh, your particular role? Uh, it's really the, the it's, it's the uh, high level oversight. <clears throat> you know, everything from marketing to uh, synergy relationships, um, and really it's just i have I have a finger in all aspects of it mm -hmm. and and uh just guide it where uh where we want this to be headed now how did yeah. you get involved with this did you get it started by yourself and with others or? with it was with our leadership team we have 12 people that that committed to launching this thing and they had worked in food banks previously ah. and uh mm -hmm. without that commitment we could have never launched so they so knew what exactly what needed to be done if they had worked with food banks that, then. That's yeah. correct. And I, I had worked with a, a food bank for uh, one year prior to that, and I just thought, let's launch. Let's get it mm -hmm. rolling. So, mm -hmm. in fact, this uh, today is our two-year anniversary. Yeah. Imagine Congratulations. that. Congratulations. Thank you. And you're here yeah. on KHTS. <laughs> yes. So we, can, we, can bl we can blow out two candles this morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. That yeah. is wonderful. And it obviously has been a big success. Yes. I, I, the first year was really challenging um, across so many levels because we were just getting tooled up, really. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and then come January, we understood why it was such a challenging year because we were getting tooled up for something uh, such a time as this. Because mm -hmm. when COVID hit, mm -hmm. we were ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And so we went through a lot of growing pains that first year. Um, and uh, then this year, it's just been remarkable uh, how important that first year was to in, or, in order to really serve our community at the capacity that we are today. Well, now, how do people get, how do people get food and goods from you? What do they have to do? Um, it, as when you visited, it's we do, when COVID hit, we turned the organization, which previously you could go in and shop right. for your groceries, mm -hmm. just like the little market, right? Yes. Um, and we would even mm -hmm. have checkout. We would even have a person that would walk with people, a volunteer, if they needed assistance mm -hmm. um, carrying their boxes of food and whatnot. But then when COVID hit, we moved to a completely different business model of drive up, drive through. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we call it a happy accident because we would have never made that decision on our own. Having been forced to make it, we were deemed essential from right. LA County and going to a drive up drive through was gave us the ability to serve five times as many people. That's oh, amazing. Wow. So yeah. when you think of it, that's why we call it a happy accident or providence or it, it just forced us to have to completely build a new business model. Well now where you are located, how how did how are you making that a drive up and drive through. That is such a narrow area. Dan? Yeah. yeah. No. And I guess when we're talking drive up and drive through, people are driving up. We're basically, um, when they drive up, they are come up, they register, sign a piece of paper, they take a cone and they go back to their car and then they wait in their car and then we will go and pull the items for them. And if there's any special needs or special items, that's all on the list. So we're basically, we're, we're the, uh, the Instacart, if you will, for, uh, 
for food distribution there. They're giving us their order. We're going in, we're pulling it, and then we're bringing it out and delivering it to their car is, is how it's working. And, and that was just because, again, from a grocery perspective, we didn't have the space within the warehouse that we have to allow for a COVID-free environment for them to come in and, and, and do that. And so we're, we were working within the parameters we had, given the space limitations we had. Mm -hmm. And so th and that, that was the idea that we came up with. And, uh, and it's worked out extremely well, and it's been highly effective. Um, you know, we've managed to continue to feed uh, solid numbers each week of people that are, are coming in as our guests and, and taking part of that and benefiting. Well, that's wonderful because when I came to visit Bradley and go through the place, I was given a complimentary box of food. I see. And my goodness, <laughs> it lasted me well over a week. There was yep. so much, yep. especially the fresh vegetables. No, it's good. That's what I loved. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's one of the things that we're really, uh, generosity is a big factor of ours. In fact, uh, it, it, what we're wanting is we're wanting to make sure that everybody walks out of there with at least a good portion of food that will help them to make it through to the next week. Mm -hmm. And if we're ever short on any particular item, we'll over uh, give on some other items then is what we'll do. So what mm -hmm. we're always constantly trying to make sure that there's food for those people to make it through the week. All of our guests are treated with the greatest level of generosity. And I guess with this COVID pandemic situation, your duties have doubled, tripled, quadrupled, yeah. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Because of people being in need, losing jobs and yeah. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. It mm -hmm. must, have, must be a, a horrible situation to be in. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm so fortunate I'm not in that situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we're still There's seeing so the cycle are. right now. We're oh. still seeing the cycle. We're still adding new uh, new guests each week. Um, and and, and the, the neat thing is is that, that there's a, a trust factor there that they come in now. And, and then they, when, as soon as they come in, they really start to feel dignified. They don't feel like that, that anything of lesser value because they're having to come and, and take food from us and, and they become part of a family. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we've created over there mm -hmm. is a solid family environment where people mm -hmm. come in and they're not just our guests, they're just another member of our family and I would do this for anybody in my family. That's incredible. Tell me what types of food are you able to give these families? Uh, we, ha we have four main areas. One is produce, one is dried goods and breads, one is deli and dairy, and then we have a, a huge selection of meats that we uh, intake weekly from uh, the major food rate retailers in town. So you come away with a balanced meal mm -hmm. um, of your proteins, of your the, the correct vitamins and, and all those. And the, what's really neat is the volunteers that we have serving on our distribution team, they're aware of putting these bags of food together. So it is a really solid diet um, for our guests that do come by. So I, I just want to make sure that our listeners know uh, that we're your your nonprofit. You're giving food away for those in need, and your um, your distribution is continuous uh, to seniors included, but all different ages. Just because this is the senior hour doesn't mean that you're on because limited to seniors that everybody can come by so i think our listeners who are in need right now would like to know how do they how do they get to the food bank and what are the hours and uh, what's the process and procedures they have to follow get the address. okay um well we're are, we're located um right on center point parkway by the carl carl boyer walmart mm -hmm. um also the uh the, um, what is on that, Bowman School? Yeah, it's on Bowman that, High School. Yeah. The Hart District Headquarters, <coughs> it's on that back road. Um, and the address is 21176 Center Point Parkway, Unit 300. There's a huge American flag flying um, on our building mm -hmm. back there. Um, our hours, uh, we, we actually distribute food is Mondays 5 to 7 p.m. Wednesdays, 5 to 7 p.m., 
and Saturdays, 9 to 11 a.m. And then we have an exclusive uh, s distribution of groceries for seniors. And that is on Wednesdays from 3.30 3 to 5 p.m. And <clears throat> the one thing I'd encourage the seniors to do, we have a big, uh, we're serving now 30 seniors a week. So that's 120 a month. And it's really exciting um, that they use Dial-A-Ride, a big group of them. Mm -hmm. And they show up, they ride together, they, they schedule their time so they can ride the Dial-A-Ride together. And we provide chairs for them to sit under a tree in the shade. And they wait for their groceries with a cone at their feet. And so then when we bring it out, um, we check them out. And when the, when the Dial-A-Ride comes back to pick them up, we help load it up into the vehicle. Wow, so, that's incredible. That must be a sight to see. Yes, and it's it's uh, we're becoming f like uh, Ohana, as they say. It's family. It is. Um, we right. get uh -huh. to know them first name basis, and it's really wonderful. Um, one thing I'll I'll also throw out: we we just found out um, that we were the charity of choice for both Vons and Albertsons. Oh and my. for the Thanksgiving holiday. So we're going to be able to provide seniors a fully cooked turkey meal and a box of all the fixings to go with it that will last you wow. uh, a good, a lo much longer than a week, right? Yeah. If, if, you, oh if you're a single, my. you can make sandwiches out of it, what, whatnot. But it's the, they're really good quality turkeys, and they're pre-cooked. And uh, we'll be serving them frozen. And then it comes with a box of, of the whole fixins with canned beans, with mashed potatoes, with cranberry, um, sauce. cranberry. Cran Oh, you've got to yeah, have the yeah, cranberry yeah. sauce. <laughs> oh, so yes. That will be starting up, being that we're in the month of Thanksgiving now. That's yeah. That will be starting up in about uh, 10 days that we'll start getting these in. So. That's incredible. We're excited about that. Oh, we yes. feel yes. very fortunate. Yeah, we're and blessed. what is nice about the uh, grocery stores doing that, they they always have fresh vegetables. Yeah. They really do. So, I, in fact, when I got my complimentary box, they were fresh vegetables. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, nothing. There was nothing brownish on any of no. it. No. Mm -hmm. It's all fresh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's so nice that these markets have a place to give the food the the groceries and everything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no. so that you know they they aren't left over there and thrown out correct they're given to an organization that can help people who need it yes and, and one other thing that is important to us not really as a brand because we are a, a charity but it's kind of our promise to our guest is we serve fresh milk and fresh eggs mm -hmm. that you'll have the dates on them are two weeks beyond you receiving them, just to ensure that we're actually being a service to you and not a hindrance of, say, mm -hmm. milk that you have for one day and then, and it's, then it's it needs to date. Out. And that, uh, that's called a compound fracture. That's how we <laughs> see that for Dr. Yeah. Dario there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and on top of all of that, with the produce like you were talking about, we do have a zero waste policy too. So if w you have a dedicated team of volunteers that are sorting through that to make sure you get the best of the best that we get, and then whatever isn't of you know, good quality and that we don't want to give to our guests, then it gets taken off to other animal farms and places like that. So the food is being redistributed. It's distributed. not being it's wasted. It's not being wasted. Yeah, and so in fact, weekly we we send a truckload of, we call it exhausted produce. Yep. Um, over to Hart Park, and we have a, a wonderful relationship with them, and that feeds their animals over there. Oh, good. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. And Billy the chicken farmer, she has a chicken ranch up Sierra Highway. She's another one on another day. And Manny the rancher, he's the third one that picks <laughs> up. So four uh, days a week, uh, we're getting there. exhausted uh, produce taken out and used for animals, which is very That's important. That's your supply chain. Yes, yes. Yes. That's incredible. We need to take a break, and we'll be back in a few moments to keep on talking. Okay. <laughs> I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220, KHTS.
There are many memorable restaurants in Santa Clarita, but three words stand out from the crowd. Mom can cook. Mama puede cocinar. Mom can cook the best Thai food on this side of the planet. Mama fait la cuisine. No matter what language you use, Mom can cook says it all. Thai food at its finest, all your favorite dishes and Mom's very own original specialties. Experience it on Soledad by the Canyon Country Post Office. Mama Alorica Jostesio. Mom can cook. You just had an accident. Now what? I'm Caesar from Body Shop 661. After you get into a car accident and call your insurance company, chances are they're going to send you to a cut rate auto body just to save themselves some money. So what do I do? Call me at Body Shop 661. Your car will get taken care of as if it were my own. No second rate parts, and the job isn't finished until it's done right. Body Shop 661 handles all types of vehicles, foreign and domestic. Plus, I work with all insurance companies. Locally owned and operated for over 20 years, on Ruther, just past Home Depot, call Body Shop 661 at 251 2252. Hi, Kirk Stinson here with Plumbing by Kirk, your hometown plumber. I want to stress to you how important it is to get proper advice on what to do in case of emergencies. Always know where your shutoff valves are to be able to isolate it and have the problem taken care of on regular hours and avoid expensive plumbing bills. We invite you to visit our website for free plumbing advice at plumbingbykirk.com or give us a call, 263-6519. That's 263-6519. My dad is the best plumber ever. Call Plumbing by Kirk. Loss of hearing can affect the quality of life. Santa Clarita Hearing Center can help. They specialize in both preventative hearing loss and corrective measures, including diagnostic tests, new technology hearing aids, cochlear implants, hearing protection, and tinnitus treatment. They can adjust your current hearing aids or fit you for new ones. Santa Clarita Hearing Center also offers sleep molds, swim molds, and musician monitors. Book an appointment today. Log on to SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Located on McBean Parkway next to the hospital. That's Santa Clarita Hearing Center dot com. It's like no other station I've ever listened to. It's great. Your your hometown station. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220 KHTS. And we're speaking with Bradley Gross and Dan Ziegler of Santa Clarita Grocery. And my goodness, the stories you're telling and the good that you're doing for our community, especially those people who are in need, and especially since we've had to go through this COVID mess. Yes. And it yes. is. It's a yeah. mess. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, there's one thing that I, I wanted to give a shout out um, to the youth of Santa Clarita. Mm -hmm. We have a large group of young volunteers um, and you know you, you kind of don't tend to hear a lot of good news about young people today no, that's very true but unfortunately the, the way the organization works um, we we welcome the youth and we have them be the runners that actually take the groceries out to people's cars but uh, there was this one uh, family that comes and volunteers and they have three boys and the parents one of their boys to be exposed to volunteering. Mm -hmm. The youngest was 12, I think it's 12, 14, and 16, something like that. And the youngest boy, uh, Nathan, came up to me after serving and said, is there anything you need beyond um, just me volunteering? And I go, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, like refrigerators or something. And I said, actually, mm -hmm. we do need a, a new refrigerator. And he said, could I do a, a fundraise, me and my brothers? And I said, absolutely. So these three young men created a website, did a GoFundMe, and KHTS is doing an article on them that's gonna come out um, in the next week. But these three young men raised $6,000. Oh. <laughs> wow. What? And, I know. And we have two brand new three-door refrigerators in our facility. Oh my goodness. And then that momentum wow. oh. uh, captured the hearts of s another volunteer, one of our lead volunteers and his friends, and then they did a fundraise to get a new three-door freezer for us. But these, wow. these young people, all, I, I, it's just 
absolutely amazing. So we have a saying at, at Santa Clarita Grocery, first time you volunteer, you're a volunteer right. in training. Second time you volunteer, you're a veteran training a volunteer in training. <laughs> yep. so, so today, Dan being on the supply and on the operations side, he has young high school kids training other high school kids three times a week to be our runners. So there's a, a, a really neat energy about this because the kids, in fact, they were on a trip to Mexico and she said to her mom, mom, is it bad that we're in, in Cabo, but, but that I'm missing being at Santa Clarita Grocery today? <laughs> so it's in their hearts. Mm. And so we have some wow. of the best young people, the brightest, they're committed, mm -hmm. they're loyal, and they are, their work ethic is, is impeccable. So um, anyway, we'll, we'll be having a spotlight on at least three of these in the next coming week. So make sure to look for it on KHTS. Oh, that is wonderful. But I do, I do want to mention, though, Bradley and Dan, that, that you, you mentioned the kids and volunteering. But, you know, I look at, at you, too, and the rest of your group uh, is doing the same thing for our community as the volunteers are doing. You are angels, mm -hmm. you know, you are saints, mm -hmm. you know, for what you do uh, for this community. Um, two year anniversary, thank you for the candles. It's a wonderful thing uh, that you have done uh, for the people in a time, in a time where it needs to be done. And I think uh, in the future, uh, they will also uh, be doing, once this pandemic is over mm -hmm. and the need I hope subside. They will. We will also uh, be looking at you and your group as contributing so much to this valley and for what we do and what we stand for. Thank you so much to both of you. Mm. Happy Thank you. anniversary. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Two years. Yes. Mm -hmm. Today. Wonderful. <laughs> if if yes. they want to get a hold, anybody wants to get a hold of you. What is your phone number? It is area code six six one. Four two five seven five seven five. Again, that's six six one four two five seven five seven five. And the address again? And Bradley. The address again? Two six one seven five Center Point Parkway. It's spelled the British way. Century, <laughs> P O I N T E <laughs> Parkway, <laughs> Unit three hundred. And we're right in the same parking lot as Oasis Furniture. They have a big sign out front. Yes. Wow. Bradley, Dan, thank you for being on the show today. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a, a great thing that you do for uh, Santa Clarita, Santa Clarita Groceries. Uh, appreciate it. Once again, 661-425-7575. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Well, thank Happy you. Anniversary. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for having us on your show. We yes. really appreciate it. Yes, I'm so yeah. glad you were here. Yeah. We are sponsored by Comfort Keepers In-Home Care, Santa Clarita Hearing Center, and Tradition Healthcare. Listen to us next week on the Senior Hour. Now go and enhance your quality of life. <laughs>